Hey everybody, Teresa Benson, Product Marketing Manager here at Redline Controls, continuing our series on Crimson 3.1. In our last episode, we created this gauge. You can see that the ma major divisions change whenever we pass the midpoint, they change color. Uh, we're gonna talk about bands and bugs today. I had mentioned them last episode. Uh, we didn't get to them, but we'll get to them today. So let's pop over into our Crimson 3.1 uh, database and double click on our gauge primitive that we have here. Okay, so we spent quite a bit of time in the format tab, here's where it changes val or changes color depending on the value. Let's go look at some of these other tabs. Layout. Layout gives you the ability, in the case of our gauges, to increase or decrease the size of the active area, the bezel if you want a slightly narrower bezel, and a bigger gauge, and that pivot point, the center point, uh, will also change in size. So I'm going to put this down to 85, so it's a little bit smaller. Style, this is where you can actually change the type of gauge that you picked. So maybe you started out and you really liked that chrome one, but now instead you want our medium gauge instead, or maybe our naked gauge, which is something that you might put over as an overlay something else. So I am going to keep with the chrome, but that's where you can make those changes. You can also uh, rotate the gauge. So if in your application it makes more sense to have it sweep from uh, right to left, you can do that. Uh, you can do any number of things. So uh, let's now talk about bands and bugs. Bands and bugs are a great visual to show your operator particular uh, like sweet spots that they want to keep a value in or keep out areas, um, where your set points might be, that sort of thing. And here's how we make those work. We enable a band. So I've enabled this band right here. We haven't put in a start and end value, but it's showing you what it's going to sort of look like once we uh, implement it. Let's say this is a keep out area and it's a, an area that I don't want uh, that value to get to, um, and it's anywhere from 80 to 100. In our example, um, this gauge goes from 0 to 100, and so maybe at 80 to 100, that's you know an area an area I really don't want that needle to get to. So that's how I might use a band. Bugs, on the other hand, maybe that's the sweet spot. That is the key point where we want an operator to pay attention and that's the spot where we want it to be. In our case, let's indicate the 50% mark as the mark where that uh, the majors are going to change color and I want it to be blue. So we can do that just like this. I click OK. And there we go. Here's our bands and our bugs. Let's send that on down. Here's what it looks like in operation. And so at that blue point, the uh, majors change color, and now we're into you know a hot zone on our gauge. But what if we want to make those bands and bugs variable? We can do that too. Let's go over to data tags, and in our gauge one, let's do uh, a few more tags here. We're going to do uh, one, which is band one start. I'm going to do uh, band one end, and let's oops, and let's make one more and call it bug one. All right, come back in here, and we'll change the bug to be gauge one dot bug one. All right, now if I just type bug one, let's see what happens. I'm going to type bug one. Crimson doesn't recognize that bug1 is a data tag, and that's because once we start organizing in folders, you put the folder name, dot, and then the tag name. You can have nested folders, so you might have gauge1, dot, pressure, dot, bug1. But in this case, I'm going to hit escape, and I'll type that in myself. So gauge1, dot, bug1. I could have also just as easily uh, been in here and double clicked and there we go. Uh, let's go to bands and band one start. I'll click in here and do band one start. 
and band one end. Okay. Now the last thing we need to do is give our user a way to update that on screen. So I'm going to drag these three things onto the screen. Notice they turned black because the background is lighter colored and I need to make these data entry. So the, the quick way to do it is I just hover and click and then I apply that to these two. So copy all formatting from this one and here we go. Let's send that down and see how bands and bugs can work as variables. Alright, so right now we see no bands. So let's go ahead and put one in there. It starts at 25 and it ends maybe at 40. And bug one is at 75. That's how quick and easy it is to add bands and bugs to our gauges. Look for more tips and tricks in our next episode.